Hey, everybody, welcome back to our All Things MSP workshop on how to identify your ideal clients and, you know, these things that you should be doing before you start marketing your MSP. And of course, I have Tim Fitzpatrick with me today from Rialto Marketing. And by the way, I wanted to say this because I forgot to say it in workshop number one, is that you got to stick around till the end because there are worksheets available at the end of every video to help you walk through the processes that Tim is going to teach us today. So Tim, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, no problem. So today we're going to dig deeper and we're actually going to go through the process of the art of ideal client interviews. And I think that's a great title. But before we get started, I think we probably ought to say, why is this so important? I know it's something that a lot of people skip because they try and do it without interviewing their ideal client yeah. profiles. Um, but why is it so important? Uh, gosh, there's a number of reasons. But one, it is very hard for us to think objectively about our businesses, right? We're too close to them. And our ideal clients can often articulate, you know, our value proposition, you know, what we do best in their own words, which is really, really important. I have never had a client go through the ideal client interview process and say that it wasn't worth the time. There are always nuggets. There's always valuable pieces of information and data that they gather from doing these interviews. And because most people don't do it, you're poised to, to take full advantage of it and leap above other people because most people don't. So, and it's really not, it does take time, but the process itself is not difficult. So, yeah. and I think people realize that as we start to walk through it, but man, our clients, like what we think doesn't matter, right? Our clients determine what's important. We may think that we have a great idea and that, oh my gosh, this new service is just going to kill it. But if you take it out to the market and it goes nowhere, well, the market spoke. So it doesn't matter what you think. And it's really, really important to understand what your, what your ideal clients think. And then you can take that information and use it as fuel for your marketing and your sales efforts moving forward. Yep. And this is, by the way, also why it's so important to do your, whether, whether you call them quarterly business reviews, technical business reviews, whatever you call them, it's so important to have these two-way conversations because you find out so much more that they're just not going to give you of their own motivation, right? You have to go out and get this information. They're not going to volunteer it. Yeah. And you know what, Eric, that's a fantastic point. Man, if you just structured this into your, your quarterly business reviews with clients that you hadn't already interviewed, phenomenal way to do it, right? Yeah. Very easy way to do it. So, um, yeah, I mean, the process itself, you know, most interviews take 20 to 25 minutes, depending on how long winded you are. So it's, you know, I mean, it's a little bit of time for the client, but it's not that long. and. Um, it's just, you, you will not be sorry that you did it. I can promise you that. Okay. So you've got a defined process set out here of five different steps. Yep. And, and the first step is to schedule them. And I think it's great that you put that one because <laughs> often it's the hardest thing to do because it's the easiest one to procrastinate on. It is. And as you work through this process, just think about, we need to we need to keep things simple. If we if we put hurdles in the way, then every hurdle is something is another reason for a client not to move forward and do it. And so, you know, whether you pick up the phone and call the client and and schedule or email them and give them a calendar link so that they can schedule when it works for them, you know, whatever works for you, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Just keep it as simple as possible and make it as easy for them to get it scheduled and actually do it. And the worksheet dives into a, a bit more detail. I've got a, you know, a, a template email that you can use, but we need to get these things scheduled. And I would shoot for five to 10 interviews. If you can do more, great. 
because you're just going to get more data. If you can't do five, well, then two or three is better than where you're at right now. But five to 10, I think, is a good number to shoot for if you can do it. Okay, which is great because that now gives you a KPI of I need to schedule five this week, five next week to yep. get my 10. And I would definitely leverage something like Calendly to make it easier, reduce the friction to the client to schedule that at, again, you said the time that's convenient for them. All right, yep. the next step is the types of questions to ask. What types of questions should MSPs be asking their clients? Yeah, and one of the resources that you guys will have is called the Ideal Client Profiler. And that is the various list of questions that we use when we do this for clients. So, I mean, everything is in there. Um, but to give you an idea, what we, we really wanna understand them and how they make buying decisions, we wanna think about things like, and this is another reason why I think the sooner you can interview a client, um, the better from once once they actually made the decision and they've started working with you the sooner you can have this interview the the more top of mind the information is going to be for the client right so it needs to be long enough where they've had time to work through the experience with you but not so long where like they've been working with you for two years how many of us remember data points from two years ago not not many of us so you know, in that first quarterly business review after they've been onboarded, that's a good time to do it because it's more top of mind. But we want to understand, you know, what was the problem that they had that got them to start taking this action, right? There's a trigger that happens, you know, for MSP, sometimes it's my current MSP just freaking dropped the ball. Or maybe they had a cyber incident of some kind that's triggering this search, right? But there are common triggers in the MSP space. We want to understand what that trigger was. We want to understand what problem it is that they're trying to solve. Once they made the decision, I need to shift MSPs. How do they go about the process? Where are they getting their information? What are their expectations as they go through that process? You know, why did they choose your MSP? over the others that they interviewed. You know, now that they're working with you, what do they love about working with you? What's the, what are the outcomes that they're experiencing because they're working with you? You know, one of the, and one of the last questions in there, I, it's, I talk about it as, as swipeable language. It's just like, hey, if you had two minutes to tell somebody else why they should work with us, what would you say? That's another great opportunity just to hear in their own words how they think about you and what you do and why somebody else would benefit from it. So there's a lot of questions in the Ideal Client Profiler. You won't ask all of them, but it, it gives you that framework will give you an idea of how you can structure your interviews and what types of questions you're going to want to ask. So I... The hood has been lifted. The tool we use when we do it, I just gave you. So take advantage of it because it took a while for us to really refine that process. And I imagine that the reason why you want to have it in such close proximity is really because you want to get the behind the scenes on the buying process from yes. their point of view. What yes. was good and bad about your buying process that made them want to buy from you. Yeah. And like I said, the time is the greater the time gap, they're just not going to remember some right. of those details. You know, oh, I think somebody referred me to you, but I'm not sure who it was. Well, if it's within three months, they're going to, oh, yeah, it was Joe over at XYZ who referred me. And after he referred me, I went on your website. I checked out your website. I liked what I saw. I actually jumped on some of your social media. You know, um, it's that kind of detail that's really important where the greater the time gap, they're just going to miss out on some of those details. Yep. And then the next one is record. And I assume this means that you actually want to audibly or, vis or visually, vi you know, with video, yeah. record the session 
so that you can go back and pick up details. Yep. Yeah. And there are, there are a lot of tools for this, right? I mean, when we do this for clients, we, we just use zoom and we record it. Um, sometimes we'll use fathom to record as well, but get a meeting recap and transcription. Um, but you want to record these because I think it's much easier for you just to be able to focus on the questions and digging deeper rather than having to worry about taking notes the entire time. Because taking, look, I'm a big note taker, but when you're writing down notes, you miss bits and pieces at times. And so I think recording the conversation gives you the ability just to simply focus on the conversation itself and ask the right questions to lead the conversation where it needs to go. And I think that it's interesting that you put this fourth one in here. Your fourth one is transcribe. Yes. And I think that this is, at least for me, because I'm a very visual person, very tactile person. So it's one thing to watch or re-listen to a recording. It's another thing entirely for me to be able to have a printed page that I can then go highlight. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. And it's, well, as we get to the next step, you'll see why I want you to transcribe. But recording and transcription gives you two different data points that you can use to review the information and come back to it. Right. And then, of course, your fifth one is reviewing data. Yes. So tell me a little bit more about that one, because I'm not as clear on that one. Yeah. So we've recorded them. We've we've got the transcriptions. We now need to review that data to pull out the gold in there, right? And I will tell you right now, in these conversations, there's gonna be things that they say that, that automatically trigger you. Like you're gonna have a lot of this coming out of the call, you'll, rem you'll remember, oh man, when he, when he or she said that, that really stuck with me. Or they might've said, you know, gosh, I really wish that you guys would do this as part of your process. And you're like, man, we need to add that into our process. Those things are going to come top of mind, but if you need to go back to it, it's the, the data is there. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I put in the worksheet here, and this is one of the things that's beautiful with the advent of AI and all the tools that are there, I have given you guys a, an AI prompt. Okay. I want you, and this is why I want you to take the transcriptions, giving you a prompt that you can load into ChatGPT or whatever tool you use. You're going to put in some data about your ideal clients, what you do, and then you're going to load the transcriptions in that prompt. And the prompt has directions of the report that we want ChatGPT or your AI tool to spit out. And it does a pretty darn good job of pulling the data that, that we ask for in the prompt out so that you've got a quick highlight summary of all of those client interviews. And then you can compare that to your thoughts, your notes, what you remember from the interviews itself. And now you've got some really strong data that you can use to help drive your marketing efforts, your messaging, all kinds of stuff. There's just, there's gold in there. Um, so that's why you want to record and transcribe. Awesome. And well, review. that brings us to the end of workshop number two. And of course they have you those great resources that are available. You can go down to the description of this video or the social media post, or, you know, I've put the links at the bottom of this screen so that you can go ahead and download those. And I'll create a shortened link so it makes it easy. You don't have to remember very much. And what we want you to do is take this and, and run through these interviews with your clients. Find out why they chose you so that you can then take this information and carry it on to the next step, which is going to be workshop number three called creating a killer message. And so don't forget to join us for that one. And uh, we'll see you when we get that one recorded.